Wow, Rahul, that was a revelation. How Snowflake stores the data in the form of these small chunks called micropartition is, is really something exciting to look for. I'm sure going to read about it more and I'll go through uh, that video. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm really, really excited about learning this uh, new idea about uh, storage. Uh, however, I still, I have some doubts, suppose, how do I think in terms of, say, my data? So if uh, I have, uh, actually, I have a set of uh, 5,000 odd uh, orders data set and uh, I wanted to follow the same ideas of uh, micro partitioning and I was, I actually wanted to understand how my data from logical view is getting converted to physical views. Uh, let me just uh, show my screen and uh, uh, if you can guide me through that exercise, that would be great. Definitely, Vinay. Do uh, go ahead and share your screen. Uh, let me see how how I can help you. All right, Rahul. Uh, let's look at this sheet. Uh, if I check here, uh, there are around five thousand and eight, five thousand odd orders, right? Order records are there. And uh, this 5,000 can become 5 million, 50 million, 500 million. So this, uh, this size will keep on increasing. So uh, using this example, I wanted to understand that, okay, how say a micro partitioning will happen. So uh, 5,000 records, uh, should I chunk them in records of 10, 20, 50? Uh, what other ways of, so in, this is about uh, partitioning, right? Chunking. So how do I chunk the data? All right, Vinay, uh, let me show you uh, how how we can actually uh, think about uh, creating micro partitions out of it. So think about the different ways we can uh, group the data. So we want to group the data, right? And uh, uh, the chunk size is somewhere between 50 MB and 500 MB. So maybe we can think that, okay, whatever way the data is in front of you, just uh, start taking chunks of them. So from here, I'll uh, count these are these are 10 records so i take this slice it out and put it here this becomes my first part partition then i go for the next one uh, count 10 copy that would become the second partition right so this way 10 records and if I have 5,000 records, 5,000 by 10, 500 micro partitions will be created. If you go by this way, right? So this big, big uh, data set of 5,000 records gets chunked into 500 by partitions of 10 records each. And uh, each one will basically will definitely have its columns. So I just complete this. right and uh, we come here so that could be the most crude way you can think of uh, creating micro partitions but the idea of micro partition is uh, the goal is very clear as we know when search is happening it should hit the minimum number of micro partitions to return the result that's the optimization goal is there so uh, when we are chunking the data is there is there some a better way that i can uh, uh, store the data into these uh, micro partitions um, and why 10 i mean 10 if i'm saying that if, if with 10 records you achieve say suppose 60 mb you can maybe stop or say 20 records or 50 records so this is basically this will ultimately will measure in terms of the size of this chunk how much it is is it between 50 mb to 500 mb right that's how you create this chunk uh, you can also think about creating a chunk uh, say by this one by ship mode right so uh, or you say a chunk by vendor id so the good thing with the snowflake is that you don't need to uh, take the headache of thinking about how do you chunk it how do you uh, design the micro partition that headache is taken away from us and all you get is some micro partitions which is which is already pretty much optimized 
uh, for uh, resulting in fast queries. It's already optimized. So one way of thinking could be that uh, I'm thinking in terms of I'm partitioning my data uh, in terms of date. So you can actually uh, filter this and uh, you can check that okay 2000 starting from 2016 October almost these dates data was there then in 2017 January almost all dates data was there. So if say if I if I uh, say uh, when I'm partitioning if I partition the data for a given date right so and we also we also know that the size of that partition will be this much only so it could be possible that for a given date for a given date the data is available across multiple chunks right or, or multiple micro partitions so for example if i extract the order purchase date from here so let me uh, insert two columns and uh, let me text to date uh, next one and uh, I put this as G1 and say finish I don't need this and you see I'm deriving uh, deriving a new column from here so this one i just need to change the format and i can change this to ddmm by 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 i say okay so this becomes the date and then if i say sort this from oldest to newest and then if i start storing say the 10 records so from here we will start 10 records like this and now we see that uh, you have a bit more order in the data and uh, this way searching for the data would be faster is what is uh, the promise from snowflake right that if you are uh, not just first of all you micro partition the data and uh, say when you're doing micro partitioning there must be some way that partitioning would be happening so i'm just thinking we are i'm just thinking about what if I could partition the data after sorting all the all the data by dates and it is fair to do that because this is time series like this is the first time any order purchase happened in the business this is the second time it happened right and all these are the timestamps so based on that if I say okay for on a daily basis if I create one partition per day uh, then uh, and, and I know that the standard size of the partition would be say suppose 10 records so in some cases if I pick up these uh, let's pick up uh, 10 records from here and uh, sorry let's again pick up 10 records and uh, now think about your partition again let's pick up the headers this is the, this is the new way of partitioning right so now if you if you think about it uh, if I have to suppose the question is to uh, where is this uh, new column got created here right so I will pick up ah yeah it's already there so uh, here if you see uh, if somebody has to search for uh, search for uh, all the records or like all the order orders placed uh, between say 4th to 6th uh, 4th to 6th uh, October right 2016 here for that for that uh, your SQL engine will only hit this micro partition and get the results instead if these records were spread across kind of uh, kind, kind of divided across multiple uh, micro partitions your SQL engine had to hit multiple partitions to assemble all the records from 4th to 6th right this is a great way of bringing all the related data right related data co-located we co-locate the data all the records for 4th 5th and 6th are together nearby and since we have sorted this uh, it, it's all about just hitting this micro partition and uh, if uh, uh, my other, other micro partitions would not have this for example if I uh, let's call this uh, new this is my first partition let's pick up the second partition 
let's pick up the second partition you see second partition second partition again uh, if you <coughs> if you suppose if you had to fetch data for for from fourth to tenth right then you would be cutting down across two partitions the previous partition partition p1 which is starting from fourth here fifth sixth seventh and in this partition seventh eighth uh ninth tenth right all this data is there so but again uh, all all the your sql engine has to do is to out of all the say 500 partitions created it needs to just go through two partitions which is this one and the and the previous one that's it and fetches so optimize query performance gets optimized if i bring in sorting the idea of sorting on a given column so uh, when we when we think say micro partitioning it is chunking but when we talk about sorting that is where we talk about cluster keys and here if you see what do you mean by clustering means bringing related data together so uh, think about uh, think about when you are going into this one this action which we did this action was clustering so i'm bringing the cluster where i'm clustering data by dates right so all 4th october is together 5th october is together 6th october is together and sometimes you will see there are a lot more transactions happening in a given day right uh, if you see this one uh, first these many transactions happened and many places you will see a lot of transactions happening on a given day so uh, you see uh, that uh, this order purchase date when you're sorting by this uh, you can now create a chunk of say 10 or 20 or whichever is the is your chunk size you can create and this way your uh, when you create create this what you call it as the cluster key this cluster key will ensure that that less number of uh, uh, micro partitions are hit to uh, fetch your results however uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, not just this you could think about adding more uh, columns to the cluster keys you, uh, the cluster keys need not be just one column cluster keys can be more than one columns also so you can actually uh, you can actually say uh, that you are ordering by date uh, per vendor right so vendor and say the order purchase date that combined together that will form the cluster key so uh, if if you combine if you combine in this way there will be one chunk for each vendor and date combination so for for the same vendor say across uh, in, in the same day so for example uh, this one 4th of uh, october this vendor 4 also vendor 5 also vendor uh, four, again this vendor 4 is coming for the same one so these two will be together and this will be separate so you can create uh, you can create in, involve more columns to create your cluster key and with involvement or more or involvement of more columns what will happen is your your data within uh, uh, your, your data within a given uh, cluster key will get sorted so basically what will happen here is since i'm considering vendor and order purchase date both so i'll go ahead and do a custom sort and i'll say first sort by vendor and then within each vendor order purchase date oldest to newest like this so now you see uh, with each vendor so it is first partitioning uh, partitioning by vendor and within vendor uh, by dates so again it would be important to know that if you see here this partition this just has one record this partition just has one record it also needs to be uh, uh, it also needs to be looked like that what is the optimum size it is coming up are there a lot of partitions with just one record or two records right so that is important to see that uh, your partitions uh, are equally populated all right, Vinay. So that's about how Snowflake stores data and uh, two important ideas to keep to summarize. One, micro partitions. These are small sized chunks in which data gets divided and gets stored. This is something which automatically take, is taken care of by Snowflake to ensure optimized search, uh, faster queries. 
Um, however, you can also, on top of the micro partitions, uh, design what you call as cluster keys, which which means that those keys ensure that your data uh, is co-located, right? Uh, and you can define cluster keys on, say, date or the combination of date and Mendel ID. Uh, basically, you want to combine the data in such a way that you are able to create these chunks of uh, uh, data. And within that, your uh, the data is sorted also uh, based on some columns, single or more than one columns combined call as uh, a cluster key, right? So we will discover more because these are ideas, but once we go ahead and implement that, then only we'll actually be playing around with them and we, we would uh, actually would like to see uh, by measuring time that the query really improves. So rather than uh, simply assuming things, we will actually go ahead and uh, we'll start with a lot of hands on now. So we will, as you were saying that, this is a data warehouse, but it should now start creating some data warehouse. So we are, we are, we are going to uh, actually start uh, designing a star schema and we will write ETL to pull data from our transactional database to uh, this data warehouse. And uh, then once the uh, data warehouse is created, then we will start writing queries. And there we will again revisit this idea about cluster keys and we'll see that if I play around with the cluster keys, how do I achieve optimization and performance? Uh, what Snowflake promises, right? So we will experiment with that and play around with it. So let's get uh, quickly get into it uh, and uh, let's get back to the portal. We are going to write a lot of SQL now. So, so let's get, get ready for that. Wow, Rahul, uh, can't wait. Let's get started. Uh, I really would like to uh, brush up a lot on my SQL. So let's begin.